The winner is... Jewel! Jewel Kilcher is the queen of folk rock in the hearts of many music lovers around the world, and while she might appear to be the poetic, deep, and introspective folk singer that has sold 30 million albums, the beautiful blonde superstar has overcome a seemingly never-ending string of obstacles in her life. Ever since she was a young girl growing up in Homer, Alaska with dreams of making it big in the industry, the singer has faced countless health, family, friendship, and financial issues. From leaving home as a teenager due to family abuse, to almost dying in the car park of a hospital as a teenager, to being defrauded out of tens of millions of dollars at the hands of her own mother. Grab a seat, because we're about to reveal the sad tragedies of Jewel Kilcher. Even if you're not a big fan of folk music, you probably know about Jewel. Her journey in the music industry began in the 1990s when she released her debut album, Pieces of You, and ever since then, the darling of folk rock music has built a remarkable career, not only as a singer, but also has written poetry books and starred in movies and TV. Jewel's music, known mostly for its heartfelt lyrics and acoustic sound, has resonated with fans around the world for almost three decades. Over the years, the singer-songwriter has received numerous awards and nominations, solidifying her place in the music industry. And anyone who's listened to the radio or watched music videos over the last 30 years will have heard songs like Who Will Save Your Soul, You Were Meant For Me, and Foolish Games. Her story is a perfect example of how passion and perseverance can lead to tremendous success. And what makes the Jewel Kilcher story even more inspiring is her path has been paved with a multitude of challenges. Although the folk rock singer has a picture-perfect image on album covers and in music videos, her life has been anything but perfect. Along her journey to becoming a renowned singer, the star singer-songwriter has faced many tragedies and challenges. She's been described as having a versatility that can summon many voices, both deep and powerful, girlish and sweet, piercing and agile, heard on both soulful acoustic ballads and danceable pop tracks. In interviews, the singer has revealed that she's faced numerous hardships all throughout her life and often has gone on record as saying that life growing up off the south coast of Alaska was both at times gloriously idyllic and also a tremendous struggle. These challenges have undoubtedly influenced her music and contributed to the authenticity that audiences recognize today. Jewel was born on May 23rd of 1974 in Payson, Utah, and the family soon uprooted and moved to Anchorage, Alaska, settling on the family's 770-acre homestead. Of that time in Alaska, Jewel's been on record as saying they often had to walk two miles just to get to the saddle barn that she was raised in. They had no running water, no heat, and had a coal stove and an outhouse and mainly lived off what they could kill or catch. Jewel and her siblings picked berries and made jam, caught fish to freeze, and even had gardens and cattle to live on. They rode horses every day in the summer beneath the Alaskan midnight sun, and she said that she loved it there. When she was eight years old, her mother left the family, and Jewel and her two brothers were then raised by their father. After her mother left was when her own father's behavior had changed. He began drinking and became physically abusive. After years of mistreatment at the hands of her father, she was no longer willing to put up with the abuse, and by age 15, she moved away from her family. She remarked about how her father was a volatile alcoholic that would abuse her, and he was a very easy-to-identify bad guy, and meanwhile, her mother seemed like the opposite. She would also remark on the times that she would have to hike no less than 500 miles just to go and see her mother, who had moved north to Anchorage. But when she would seek support from her mother regarding the abuse that she experienced at the hands of her father, Jewel says that her concerns would often fall on deaf ears. Jewel had started performing in bars at a young age and recalls the time that she faced severe sexual harassment, often at the hands of the audience members in the bars which she performed in. In one particular instance, a man had slammed her against the wall after a performance when she was 12 years old, demanding to know if she had cheated on him. That time in the budding singer's life would be marked by regularly dodging uninvited advances from much older men and actually carrying a knife at times as a matter of protection. The trauma that she felt having to deal with such behavior would induce panic attacks, something that she would have to confront along with severe anxiety in her life later on. 
It was at the age of 15, while working at a dance studio in Anchorage, that she would be referred by the studio instructor to an arts academy, where she had applied and received partial scholarship to study operatic voice. Local businesses in her hometown of Homer then donated items for auction to help allocate additional funds and raise a total of $11,000 to pay the remainder of her first year's tuition. She subsequently relocated to Michigan to attend the academy, where she received classical training and also learned to play the guitar. In 1993, she hitchhiked to San Diego, California to further her musical career, busking and working part-time in a warehouse in order to pay the bills. The challenges that she had faced as a teenager were not left behind in Alaska. After turning down a boss from a warehouse that she worked at who propositioned her, she was now in her late teens and finding herself completely broke, homeless, and living out of her car. And just when it seemed as though her circumstances could not sink any lower, she found herself in the waiting room of a hospital on death's door, dying of a kidney infection within weeks of becoming homeless. She was turned away due to not having health insurance and almost died in the parking lot until an intervention from a doctor who treated her for free with a dose of antibiotics. By now, she was at her lowest point, completely unaware that her life was soon going to be completely turned around, all thanks to her talents as a singer-songwriter. The only glimmer of hope in her life at that time was the regular performances that she was putting on at a San Diego cafe. The budding folk pop singer-songwriter would soon be discovered by record companies, and her life would be changed forever. It was at the Interchange Coffee Shop in San Diego on a Thursday evening where she would start the process of signing her first label deal. Jewel was discovered by Inga Vanstein in August of 1993 when a musician from a local San Diego band called Rust, whom she was managing at the time, had called her to tell her about a girl surfer who sang at a local coffee shop on Thursdays. She then drove to the coffee shop, soon after with a rep from Atlantic Records, and after the show, they made a call to Danny Goldberg, the head of Atlantic Records' West Coast Operations, asking him to pay for Jewel's first demo. Van Steen eventually became Jewel's manager and was instrumental in creating a major bidding war, which would lead to her deal with Atlantic Records. And at the age of 19, the talented singer-songwriter recorded her first album, Pieces of You. Pieces of You was released in 1995, recorded in a studio on singer Neil Young's ranch, and it included Young's backing band The Stray Gators, who played on his Harvest and Harvest Moon albums. Part of the album was also recorded live at the Interchange Cafe in San Diego, where Jewel had risen to local fame. The album stayed on the Billboard charts for two years, reaching number four at its peak, and spawned the top ten hits You Were Meant For Me, Who Will Save Your Soul, and Foolish Games. To promote the album, Jewel toured as the opening act for Bauhaus frontman Peter Murphy on his 1995 North American tour in support of his album Cascade. Pieces of You eventually sold over 12 million copies in the United States alone. After the release of the first effort, Jewel was soon scooped up as a supporting act for Bob Dylan and Neil Young, both of whom became mentors to the up-and-coming star. The next few years of the singer's life was an ongoing schedule of touring, songwriting, and recording, and one particular performance that stands out as controversial was the 1998 Super Bowl when Jewel, who had been asked to perform the Star Spangled Banner before the game, was criticized for lip-syncing the song. Introduced as San Diego's own Jewel, the singer noticeably missed her cue to start and consequently missed the first few words of the beloved anthem. Producers of the Super Bowl have since admitted that they have always attempted to have performers pre-record their vocals. She would later get the chance to redeem herself when performing the Star Spangled Banner once again at the 2003 NBA Finals in one of the New Jersey Nets' home games. Her second studio album, which she titled Spirit, would be released November 17th of 1998. The album debuted at number three on the Billboard 200, with 368,000 copies sold in its first week. It eventually sold 3.7 million units in the United States, with its lead single Hands peaking at number 6 on the Billboard Hot 100. Shortly after its release, she made the decision to explore another side of show business, making her acting debut playing the character of Sue Lee Shelley in Ang Lee's western film Ride with the Devil, opposite of Tobey Maguire. The film would receive mixed positive reviews, though critic Roger Ebert praised Jules' performance, writing that she deserves praise, 
or quite simply performing her character in a convincing and unmannered way. She's not a pop star trying out a new hobby. In 2016, she was featured in the Comedy Central roast of Rob Lowe, having previously met the actor when she was supposed to co-star with him in The Lion's Den. During the roast, she performed a parody of You Were Meant For Me, claiming that she was the 16-year-old caught with Lowe in a famous sordid 1988 videotape. Along with her work in music, Jewel is well known for humanitarian efforts in a variety of ways. In September of 2006, as part of Lifetime's Stop Breast Cancer for Life campaign, Jewel delivered more than 12 million petition signatures to Capitol Hill, urging Congress to pass the Bipartisan Breast Cancer Patient Protection Act of 2005. The bill would ban the practice of drive through mastectomies when women are discharged from the hospital only hours after their surgery. Jewel also served as an honorary chairperson of the 2006 Help the Homeless Walk in Washington, D.C. Then in November of 2008, she began working on a project with several dozen singer-songwriters to write and auction their lyrics with donations benefiting her Project Clean Water charity. Many singers and songwriters besides herself have donated, including Patrick Davis, Alabama's Randy Owen, John Mellencamp, Jason Mraz, Gretchen Wilson, and Marv Green. In May of 2013, Jewel would serve as ambassador for the Rethink Why Housing Matters initiative, and she was included in the initiative's public service announcement, which asked Americans to rethink their views on public housing while considering the benefits for people in their own communities. It was in these early stages of her career that the singer was involved in one of the more important relationships of her early years. After witnessing Jewel's performance on Conan O'Brien, actor Sean Penn had sought the singer out with a phone call to her father's home in Alaska. Her father assumed it was a prank. Penn then asked the singer-songwriter if she would write a song for his upcoming film, The Crossing Guard. They would go on to meet and work together on the film before things then got serious. In her biography, Never Broken, the singer had confessed, he began to court me in earnest, following me around on tour, acting as my de facto roadie. Jewel would then go on to cut the track Emily for the film The Crossing Guard and accompanied Penn to the Venice Film Festival. Tabloid reporters had failed to notice the new relationship. The now up-and-coming star would keep her relationship with Penn quiet, but is said that she enjoyed her time with a movie star, saying that she enjoyed his mind and had a lot of fun sparring with him. She would then go on to walk the red carpet for the film and later dine with Hollywood heavyweights like Roman Polanski, Jack Nicholson, and Warren Beatty. The couple eventually split up, but they remain friends to this day. Soon after the ending of her relationship with Sean Penn, her life took a quite tumultuous turn with her mother due to financial mismanagement and allegations of embezzlement. Her mother had managed Jewel's career for many years, and she would be accused of mishandling and misappropriating funds. In interviews and in her memoir, Jewel revealed that around 2003 she had discovered significant discrepancies in her finances. And despite her substantial earnings from her successful music career, she had found herself in dire financial straits. Jewel's mother had been her business manager and was embezzling her earnings to the tune of tens of millions of dollars. Not only had the superstar songwriter lost millions, but she had also found herself in $3 million of debt. The shocking discovery led to a complete severance of the mother-daughter professional and personal relationship and she described feeling blindsided and deeply hurt by her mother's actions. The financial and emotional fallout from the betrayal was substantial, and Jewel has not spoken to her mother since. The most pivotal and important relationship that the singer has had in her life is that with rodeo star Ty Murray. Murray and Jewel would first cross paths at the 1999 Denver Rodeo, but the two began as friends, exchanging text messages over a period of months before finally becoming official, when she moved into the Rodeo Star's 2,200-acre ranch in Texas. In 2008, the couple secretly wed in the Bahamas, with only a guest list of two that were present for the occasion. Only a few years after the nuptials, the couple gave birth to a baby boy and continued their idyllic life on their Texas ranch. Sadly, in 2014, after nearly six years of marriage, they end up divorced. Of the divorce, Jewel wrote a statement released to the general public, declaring that the couple had decided to part amicably with their son's best interest at heart. In her statement, she said, We have chosen the much more difficult task of undoing ourselves stitch by stitch and releasing each other with love so that we may take on our new form. 
In her career, the singer-songwriting legend has been nominated for four Grammy Awards and sold in total over 30 million albums, and to this day, she still focuses on songwriting and performing, her ongoing humanitarian work, and co-parenting her son with her ex-husband Ty. With the seemingly insurmountable amount of obstacles that the singer-songwriter has overcome, she's found fulfillment in her career in music and her relationships with friends and family. Jewel's commitment to raising her son and living authentically has helped guide her from a small cabin in Alaska to the heights of superstardom. If you enjoyed this video, leave a comment below and make sure to hit that subscribe button so you never miss another video from Project Asteria. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.